What up, it's Breezy. I'm here. Just finished my interview at Dash Radio, Hollywood Unlocked, Uncensored, and it's going crazy. This interview was great, definitely. It's, I think this might have been my first interview here in LA, and I appreciated it. Jason is amazing. Melissa is looking good. So, you know me, I'm cool. What up, everybody? This is Jason Lee, and this is Hollywood Unlocked Uncensored. And I'm Melissa Ford, a.k.a. The Curve Queen. Giovanni is still out sick. Mm -hmm. So we usually have Giovanni here, but we have Breezy in the building. Yes. Yo. Welcome. Welcome. We've been talking about this interview for I don't know how long. And Mm -hmm. so because the other night I left Breezy in a strip club with brown juice, I figured it's it's time. (laughs) Where were you guys, Sam's? It went to LD. Yes. Okay. Just went out and had a good time. Okay. All All right. So um, many people know. I didn't know your name was Kalisha. Yes. Mm-hmm. You don't give me Kalisha. Now Kalisha that I know you. Brianna. Brianna Murray? Yeah. See, I know you. I, I would think you were more of a Rhonda. Ooh, wee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just Rhonda? No, I'm just playing. I don't know, Rhonda. Mm-hmm. Um, I always, I, you know, I used to have a, <clears throat> my sister, her name is, uh, what's that girl's name? God. Your sister. Your no, sister. I, I don't really talk to her that often. He's got, so a, he's got a few of them. Not Dolores. I don't talk to her because she's the scammer of the family. <laughs> No, really. Joanne? She know her name. Joanne is my stepmom's name. <laughs> I'm trying to think of her name right now. It really... Felicia Belinda Dolores. Cheryl. Okay, there you Cheryl. Go. Jeez, Shout out to Cheryl. Please. Cheryl. She's a scammer of the family. <laughs> All right, so um, Kalisha mm-hmm. and Breezy. So I first saw you on Empire. Was that your first acting gig? That was. Mm-hmm. Your first my gig? first time, yep. The biggest show on television. Yep. How'd they find you? You're originally from um, from Philly. Yeah. Yeah, born and raised. Mm-hmm. Okay, so how did the casting process go? Did they just kind of find I, you through your music? They, or? Well, it kind of, you know how things work. It's like who you know mm-hmm. or who knows you. Mm-hmm. And um, someone contacted me, somebody. I was, I've was i been a barber since I was about 10 years old. Mm-hmm. So this was someone whose hair I used to cut. Oh, really? L- not Ludacris? No. Nah. Okay. Mm-hmm. He wasn't nobody, but. He just called and was like, hey, you know, the show, you heard of it. And I was a fan, you Mm -hmm. know, first season I was watching it. He was Mm -hmm. like, they're looking for a female rapper, you know, so I gave him your name, blah, blah, Mm -hmm. blah. Mm -hmm. And um, they put me in contact with Leah Daniels and they wanted Mm -hmm. to send music and photos, Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. three of each. And I sent it. It's like seven in the morning. Yeah. I didn't know what was going on. I just sent it. It was too early for me to honestly (laughs) process. Yeah. I just sent it. And, um. They called. They called again, and they they like asked me for references, and then they did like a personality test or something like that. And what then, is a personality test? Because I know I would fail. I think they called and just asked people about me, like how is she to work? Oh, with like character or, and all yeah, that. Character references. Yeah, like, yeah. And I think mm-hmm. at that point they actually did ask some celebrities. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, but I mean everything came back. Okay. They won, and mm-hmm. then uh, I went to audition. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. It's like I was in there with a lot of people, like yeah. Saya, Dreezy, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. A lot of female artists were in there, and I was mm-hmm. like, I don't know what's going on. Right. I didn't have a script. I didn't have anything, so I got the script as soon as I got there. Wait, and but had you ever acted? No. You had never acted? Acted fool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I had never, and um, I just went. I went to the audition, and I had the paper, and I, I got in front of the casting director, and I was just reading off the paper because... Mm-hmm. Nobody gave me a heads up on mm-hmm. anything. Right. Yeah, so I got in front of the casting director. I'm reading off the paper, mm-hmm. and she was like, when did you get the script? And I was mm-hmm. like, just now. Mm-hmm. It was on the table when I walked in. Mm-hmm. So she was like, go to lunch, go have lunch, go over it. And mm-hmm. I came back, and I was able to read off book. Which okay, means, good, yes. You know. Yeah, yeah. And I did it, and that was it. I left, and mm-hmm. I got a call from Lee Daniels like the next day. Mm. How'd that I feel? Love you, so I was excited. Me and my mom was like on speakerphone, like, yeah. you know what I mean? But I still didn't know what I was going to do. I feel like that would be the better way to kind of get a gig because having done, you know, the casting, you know, the, the cattle call that is, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. castings and stuff like that as an actress and like sitting there hoping, knowing the project is going to happen mm-hmm. months in advance and then mm-hmm. your agent finally gets you an interview. It's nerve wracking for yeah. you. You woke up, you clean, you know, wiped the eye snot out of your eyes and just said, oh, here's my stuff. And then you went to an interview and then you ended up be- getting it. Your yeah. first acting gig on Empire. That's Awesome. And, and so you didn't yeah. go in like, Lord, please let me get this part. You just did it because you were asked to do it. Yeah, well, uh, acting wasn't, it wasn't a thought. I had never thought about it. Mm-hmm. So I just went, you know, I just like, you know, I was myself completely, mm-hmm. you know, through the whole process. And that was something that they fell in love with, just mm-hmm. who I was naturally. So mm-hmm. I was able to really perform, you know, as myself. As I got more into it, I learned things and I sat and I talked to Terrence and I talked to Taraji. You know what I mean? Of just mm-hmm. how just to be my best. Just casually Terrence yeah. Howard and Taraji. Yeah, Terrence P. and Taraji, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, and uh, Gabby Sidibe as well. But just mm-hmm. to, you know, how to just enhance the natural ability already. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So just taking pointers from them and I was able to just, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay, so as a person who has been thinking about acting, not that I would become, I don't know that I could become an actor because the pressure of memorizing lines mm-hmm. just seems so complicated. I mean, you've been in movies. Is it hard to remember all your lines? Is that pro- not is at that all. Pro- I mean, when you think about it, how many songs do you know? I don't really know songs anymore. See, I know every song there is. Okay. I don't know. Melissa, how many songs do you know? Oh, I know. I'm terrible. Like, I, 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 I could, Mary had a little lamb. I got those <laughs> okay, lyrics Okay, so I guess, it's just, I guess it's just person to person. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I love music, and I, I remember things. I don't know why. Okay. I just remember them. So, for me, you know, I'm not a studier. I've never been, like, sit down and get in a book. I'm like, I just scam it or scan, scan it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? When you read, a, when you're doing a scene... Are there are, are there lots of lines that you have to remember? Well, no, they, uh, it just depends. It's, it's scenes. Yeah, so it so you know, you're shooting the scene. You're shooting the scene. You don't have to memorize the entire script. So you know script. if you're... Honestly, be yeah. five lines. Yeah, okay. exactly. So if you know Cookie stole your shit, you're going in to confront Cookie about stealing you know your shit. What the, you, prior to you getting there, you know what scenes are going to yeah, be shot for the sides. day. Yeah, they give you sides. Yeah, they give you sides. Probably the size of your cell phone. Yeah, really? you know, give you sides that yeah. have everything on it that you're going to say. Mm-hmm. So I will say to you, I want to be on Empire. Now, let me tell you, I have Leah's email. I've never emailed her because it's just like, then it gets really real. Mm-hmm. But I always yeah. wanted, I always thought on Empire or the nemesis of Empire Power, there should be some type of blogger or something, a news person, media person. Well, there person. was the Breakfast Club. We had Angela Yee and Charlamagne the God. Yeah, but I mean, one, okay. Mm. Yeah, that's I weird. mean, is that that's the same thing or is it not? Well, yeah, I mean, kind radio, sort of, yeah. yeah, but, you know, like, okay. somebody creating drama and dropping oh, tea you. and all, you mm. know. <laughs> oh, that's it. Leah. Okay. Yeah, that could be fun. You know her. Yeah, I will, I will. Hey, Leah, check your inbox. It's coming. That's so funny. how is it working with Lee Daniels? I mean, he's controversial outside of the show. I mean, he says pretty much whatever he wants. Yeah, and he's, he's zero filter. He has no filter. How is it working with him? Is he the same way on set? Does he give you constructive criticism? Is it hard? Rough. I, I think he's a he's a very passionate person. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of them are. Mm-hmm. You know, when you take something serious and you have a vision, you know, you we we are responsible for making that come to life. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I think rightfully so, if someone sees something that isn't to their liking, then you know, they'll speak on it. But yeah. other than that, I didn't, you know, I didn't he's regular to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Of course I've seen him go crazy because if you're not getting what you want and you know with production there's a lot of time and money involved you know what mm-hmm. i'm saying so things have to be done in a timely fashion and that's probably the only time i've ever seen him mm. you know get loud yeah and he's always in his pajamas right no doesn't <laughs> every time lee, i seen him he's dressed i thought lee daniels thing was producing i've had him in his pajamas. i think my first day on set he yelled at me like a few times no no he's, he's in his pajamas doesn't he wear his pajamas? No. I've never heard I've that. I've seen him in regular no? clothes. No? I yeah. could, I, no. I've, I've never, never seen him in his jammies. Yeah, I think I saw an interview once where he said, he, <laughs> I thought I saw an interview with him once where he says he likes to produce, like, do his thing wearing his pajamas. I mean, they're stylish. It's not like yeah, Superman Yeah, maybe, shit maybe I if got. there's, like, sweats and, like, you know, those goofy know. slides, you know, maybe if it's something I, like that. I, have, I don't know. I Everybody's don't. pajamas are different, though. Yeah. What exactly. do you think about the contrast that people always try to do in comparing power and empire mm-hmm. against each other. What do you think about that? I mean, I think it's just typical. I don't yeah. I don't really I don't understand the comparison. Do you watch Power? Uh, to be honest it's with okay you. It's okay if you say no. I've never seen an episode. You, I've never seen an episode of it's Power. It's only because I don't have showtime though. I've, I've heard about it and but you know, I'm just I'm one of them people I watch things if I can't take what I'm seeing and implement it in my real life, I don't watch it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so I watch I haven't watched it. So your character's name is Frida Gatz, mm-hmm. correct? Okay, so yeah. what parallels do you draw between your character and yourself? Like, what, what do you, how are you different from her? And how is she, you know, kind of cut from the same cloth as I you? I think uh, Frida Gatz was breezy at 16, 17, mm. 18. You know what I mean? And Pulling just, out guns and acting And just wild. as a woman, mm-hmm. it was just that moment in time where you're trying to find yourself. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we all don't come from perfect backgrounds. Mm-hmm. We do experience the street life, you know, mm-hmm. some women, strippers, drugs, whatever, you know what I mean? We experience all these type of things. So it's kind of like, you know, as a woman, me and a million others, we all went through the same type of thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just trying to find yourself mm-hmm. and what works, what doesn't work. Um, Breezy's never been to jail, mm. never shot anyone, you know what I mean? But I was that hard hit. I've mm-hmm. been that for, but I've grown so much as a woman. <laughs> but that was definitely me 
at 16, 17. Mm. So did you know Amber Rose and those all the people from Philly that have now made it? In the met, did you know them? I met Amber Rose when I was about 16. She used to hang with Anissa from the real world. Mm-hmm. Mm. That was way back when. You know Damn, what I, mean? I forgot about Anissa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I've, I've, I've come across a lot of people you mm-hmm. know, when I was younger because I've always just been vibrant and just out here. So. Mm-hmm. And so, when, when you, you, one of your another person from Philadelphia, Kevin Hart, he's a part of the whole H and M family. What do you think about this whole monkey movement with the sweater and everything that's happening? Do you think it was much to do about nothing, or do you think that there's some credibility in people being upset about this? I mean, little boy wearing the monkey. I outfit? didn't think. I did not look at it as it was an issue. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I mean, I actually seen this shirt in the store. So, I. I mean. I didn't think it was a problem. I think that, you know, we just in a time right now where people are going to make something out of nothing. If it looks any, any way, shape or form off balance, it's a problem. You know, you know what I mean? You know, it's funny is um, I've got a girlfriend who's born and raised in in Sweden. Why are you holding your phone like you're about no, to go be- outside right no, now? No, because I want to read what she said. <laughs> okay. I sent her the whole controversy and I was just like, you know, have you heard about this? And what's your opinion as... Um, she's biracial, half black, half girl, half white girl living, had born, born and raised in Sweden. So I was like, is it the same deal, big deal that it is here? And so I just kind of wanted to read a little bit of what she said. Um, she, she says, yes, it was wrong and unacceptable for H&M to advertise it, but it's definitely blown out of proportion. There is a conversation about it here, but not nearly as large as it is in the U.S. It's not as black and white here. So I honestly think, don't think the whole thing was intentional. I found that fascinating that she thinks that way. Um, most people here don't even read into stuff like that. If the shoot was done in America, I would probably feel differently. So she thinks that it's just like the context was. Well, with, the, with the current climate right now with the Cheeto in charge in the White House, do you think that Donald Trump and that whole the whole racism conversation has just created a, a just a heightened level of sensitivity? Yeah, because I think it's, you know, it's starting at the head, you mm-hmm. know what I mean, and, and the way he's choosing to treat certain you know people who are different of people, yeah. yeah you know what i mean it's mm-hmm. kind of like okay but I, I i i didn't really get into the h&m thing i didn't read about it i really just you know I, some things i just don't involve myself in like mm-hmm. it does not bother me but right. i really would like to know like what what was the issue people saw like was it black people being compared to monkeys yes that's yes, what it was. It was well, because yeah. in this country, black people have been referred to as a monkey. Yeah, and it, and it was a little black boy with a hoodie that said "coolest monkey in the jungle." Why so, are you giggling? Cause because now, it's because now it, you're gonna get attacked. No, for because giggling. it's no, because it's hard. You did not. That wasn't a nervous giggle, and that you saw that in your mind when you was telling her what was on the sweater. You were picturing the little black boy wearing that green monkey sweater. Stop putting words in my mouth and thoughts in my head, Just go back okay? To Melissa, because please. what I was laughing about is how incredulous the situation is. Uh, you need to explain what that word means. Uh, the audacity that the company had to put this little boy in a t-shirt that said that. It just how it's so ridiculous. So if it was on a white kid, it would have been fine. I yeah, think so. But, oh, but here's another thing. You know that <laughs> I you, think so because I don't yeah. think a monkey's my, my, a monkey. Well, let me say this. As a, as a, even though y'all don't believe it, as a black person, <laughs> I looked at it, and as soon as I saw the picture, I was like, Psh, y'all know. But wait, yeah. Because he didn't look a little Spanish. That nigga looked black. Yeah, that nigga looked black. Okay, so, but here's another question. Me and my girlfriend were talking about this. You know the company Bathing Ape? Yeah. Imagine they'd come up with the same hoodie. Mm-hmm. You know everybody's I mean? wearing it exactly everybody's gonna wear it exactly it's the whole it's babe why, how how exactly. are you not that and the line's gonna be all the way down fairfax because it says yeah. babe not coolest monkey but <laughs> ever. It, but, but babe I don't is know. bathing ape yeah but I, I we know that so if they'd come out with that and put a little black boy in the same hoodie but who, yet own, it, who owns bathing ape a black person an isn't asian it, person isn't it asian, a japanese right? company asian, yeah 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 I don't really, I don't, I never understood the hype with Bathing Ape. I'm sorry. I don't know. Maybe I'm just not. Branded, I'm, I'm just, real branded. It's dope. Yeah, yeah. I'm just not that cool. He stamped it. Yeah. And, and I think because it's a part of the culture. H&M mm-hmm. is not a part of the culture. H&M is just where there's affordable clothing. Yeah, really nice affordable clothing. It's going to be hard to stay out of there. So, so we, so we were living in a Nicki Minaj world and mm-hmm. as a fellow MC, female MC, now we have Cardi B on the, she's the out parts. there. Mm-hmm. And there's this whole movement to pin Cardi against Nikki, Nikki against Cardi as a female MC. What do you think about that? Do you think we live in a place where women, where people won't allow women to coexist in hip hop? I, I feel like it's, it's, 
I mean, women are women, and you know how women are. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like it ain't no comparison between Cardi and Nicki. It's not. Cardi comes from a totally different background. She's got a totally different story. You know what I'm saying? And I think that, you know, her progression, you know, with her career and where she came from, how it was done, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's something to be proud of. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Why not? Why wouldn't you? Why, why do you want to see somebody stuck? Why she got to still be in a strip club? You know what I'm saying? Why mm -hmm. she got to? She ain't got to do all that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like it ain't no... It ain't no comparison. I don't even I don't even understand it. You know what I mean? But you have women who don't want, you know, people they it's only me. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I don't know if Nikki's like that, but that's how I go. You are, know what I'm saying? Are you currently represented by a label, independent or otherwise? I'm independent. You're independent? Yeah. Okay. Have you ever had like, you know, people part of your team who felt like, you know, you needed to kind of like sexualize your image in nope. order to no? No. Nope. Okay. I've always had a very strong personality mm -hmm. uh, and a, a strong stance on who I am, I always knew. I never, see, when you come around people and you appear to be confused mm -hmm. or unsure, mm -hmm. that's when people start to give their opinions. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? More so. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, with me, you know, I've, people have made suggestions. Yeah. But so, I'm me. You can't. So you were rumored <laughs> to be friendly with Days Loaf. Yeah. Days Loaf went through a transition. Um, she came out very uh, Frida ish. Mm -hmm. and like then, with a mustache, Frida? No. I'm sorry. I'm Hold on, let me, legit let me go back and make sure. I got <laughs> oh, sorry. I was like, wait, I'm sorry. I just was. I'm just wondering if I'm at the same interview. You were. <laughs> I was like, but the Mexican artist. Stop that, fucking oh, with. Yeah. Stop fucking with the weed products before you come to work. I can't mm -hmm. do. This is why I don't fuck with niggas that do drugs because I can't I stay focused. Not. I'm here. Okay. You so. No, I used to have a boyfriend. All this nigga did was wake and bake, sleep and bake, eat and bake. What does breath smell bake. like? Ba smoke and bake. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So <laughs> back to my question. Mm. Um, when you saw Deja, Deja, you and Deja never, you and Deja Love never dated. No. You, you looked that way. You you looked like you was looking for a side. And, no. I mean, okay. No. No, there was the rumor that you guys were involved. <laughs> Who said that? Somebody. No. They, you damn blogs quit Them. reporting the right. shit. Right? No, no. Deja, I don't want to no. know this. Yeah. They want. She's a friend though. Okay, so when Deja went, Deja. Why do I keep calling her Deja? I don't know. <laughs> so name. Same, same reason oh. I said Frida Kahlo. Deja. Okay, when yeah. Deja Loaf went through that transition, did you look at it and go, "Them people is telling her to do something else"? Nope. That was her own personal transition. I, I don't know whose it was. I don't know whose idea it was, but I respect it as a woman. Like you, what is your life without growth? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And again, you don't know where she came from. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know what you read, what you've seen, what mm -hmm. she's shown you. Mm -hmm. But we don't know where she's come from or um, what she's been through and, you know, who she felt she was destined to be. Like, I know me. If you would have met me, what, seven, eight years ago, I had a fade, temp, sideburns, waves, fitted hat. You know, I had mm -hmm. all that. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But... As I got older, I was like, I'm pretty. I'm this. I'm, mm -hmm. And I wanted to, you know, embrace that. Mm -hmm. And that's me. So mm -hmm. you might see me and I look like this, but then you just see me on the red carpet the other day looking like a snap. Yeah, you mm -hmm. you, you, you were at the you end of what I'm saying, yeah. But I'm 100% comfortable in who I am, so it doesn't matter mm -hmm. to me. It don't matter. So when I see people go through things like that, and I've had conversations with Dave, like, she's exactly who she wants to be. Ain't mm -hmm. nobody telling her nothing. And she looks beautiful. Yeah, we said Saya here on the show, and she was very, very comfortable with who she is as well. Who? Mm -hmm. Saya. Uh, some people are like that. Mm -hmm. Some people like that. I'm sorry. Like, I want children. I want my kids to respect me as their mother. I have nieces. I have a family that loves me, like, and, you know, appreciate my beauty just as much as I do. Mm -hmm. So not saying that you can't wear a hat and do whatever, mm -hmm. but this is just how I choose to represent myself. Mm -hmm. And I felt the same with Dej. And whoever... You know, for those who are forced or coerced to do whatever it is, it's unfortunate, you know. Do you feel do you feel like there could still be mainstream? Um, I mean, well, there is clearly because you're breaking that barrier through Empire. Mm -hmm. But in music, do you th think there could be that mainstream acceptance of a person who is either publicly a lesbian or publicly gay. I mean, we had Frank Ocean who had great success, mm -hmm. but we haven't had many Frank Oceans after, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think there can be that um, acceptance or when do you think that will become just very fluid? I think it's fine. I don't care when when it starts or when it finishes. It's, it's fine. It's okay. I think it'll be fine either way. I don't mm -hmm. think it, it'll be an issue for anybody. What, for what? Why mm -hmm. would it be? You know what I mean? Because all, all it is is conversation. Mm -hmm. You can say what you want about me. Right. Mm -hmm. Still fuck with me, though. 
<laughs> and I and I agree. I think that I think that's part of why I get along with a lot of people yeah. or don't get along with a lot of people. I mean, I think it's just something it you choose to do mm-hmm. at the point you shut your bedroom door. Mm-hmm. Right. Other than that, what does it what does it make you? You still Jason. Right. Mm-hmm. You still my bro. Mm. I'm not calling you sis or nothing like that. You know right. what I'm saying? Don't matter. Okay, so on the set of Empire, um, working with Taraji, she's on my wish list of people to interview. How is it mm-hmm. working with her? I mean, is it is she funny off camera as much as yes. she is on camera? Yeah, I think she's she's very funny. She's very outspoken. Um, and just, I think it, you know, especially when you work in them long hours, it mm-hmm. just helps get through the day. Mm-hmm. I think everybody's comical. Jesse, Terrence, Terrence mostly, he'll sit and play whatever instruments in the room. Mm-hmm. You know, Taraji will laugh, and so everybody will. So I think it... She's definitely, like, watching her, you know, you got to understand, I was just a fan. I was mm-hmm. watching you from Baby Boy. I've seen her on Sister Sister. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's just like, damn, what you... So, you know, every, but everybody's so normal, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and it totally changed, you know, my outlook on celebrities. celebrities the concept because, of celebrity, yeah. Yeah, because mm-hmm. these are regular people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Have you had a chance to see Proud Mary? That's her movie that just I came did, out. I have not. I, I was wondering not, if she, like, did, yeah, like, a screening I'll, for everybody. You yeah, know, I haven't seen it. I wanted to see it last night, but it didn't happen. Yeah, I'm definitely in, in line to say that, to see that. Okay, so you were also on Tales. Yeah. Irv Gotti had, mm-hmm. you know, the, his... Um, Anthology series. Anthology series. Mm-hmm. Which episode were you were you in? I uh, did uh, Slick Rick's children's story. Okay, I didn't see that one. Can you? What was this? What's the synopsis of what happened well, there? Do you, are you familiar with the record? Once um, upon a time, yeah, not yeah, long of ago. So mm-hmm. yeah, it was just that story. And um, wait, not not the Mariah Lynn version. No. What? <laughs> So basically, tales. No, you know, once upon a time, not long ago, I was a hoe. No, no. Okay. With people no. wore pajamas no, 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 no. and lived okay. life slow. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, and it was a complete depiction of that story. Right. Um, at the end of the song, Slick Rick says, you know, just a, just another case about the wrong path. And mm-hmm. it was it was the the what if. Mm-hmm. I, it was a what if. It was it was a, a young girl, um, you know, low on money, you know, family about to get put out of house, whatever. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. she just by any means goes out to get it. Her and her cousin Deacon end up robbing, you know, people at ATMs, doing mm-hmm. dumb stuff, stick ups. And then eventually, you know, my character Ty, she's like, yo, we need more money. Like mm-hmm. we need to hit a bank. Mm-hmm. You rob a bank. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And she kind of goes out really like Queen Latifah did and set it off. Nice. I was just about to say it sounds yeah. similar to set it nice. off. Yeah, it goes out like that. And I was very proud to play that role because that hasn't happened since Queen Latifah did it. I have to see that. First of all, I was watching TV the other it's night. It's available on title. Mm-hmm. Watching on title. Oh, yeah, okay. I was watching TV the other night and saw, uh, actually, I flipped to, uh, to set it off right at the scene when Latifah was going to die. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I always enjoy that part as much as it's weird because I've known her for almost 26 years now. Uh, but I remember sitting in the theater watching her die mm-hmm. and really crying. Like, really, cause yeah, she, that was sad. she played it so well. I was so, so upset because well. they wouldn't let me Do die it. Yeah, on yeah. camera. They were like, Do you, you know, in that scene, we seen Queen get hit up yeah. and yeah. wouldn't let me. Why? I don't know. That's interesting. They and just it, wouldn't let me do it. But you see me. They put me in a no, body bag we, and zip me up. Because we see Keith die. Keith um, Powers. Yeah, Keith Powers yeah. die in his episode. Yeah, like, I don't know. Very graphically. I don't so. know. But see, mine was, you know, it was a standoff just like hers. So mm-hmm. it should have been, it would have been graphic. Listen, for all these years, I thought that was uh, Dana singing while she was getting shot. It's some girl named Lori Perry. <laughs> yeah. I had to watch it on, because uh, it's on the new Big Sean Dana. song. Mm-hmm. That's your homegirl? Love her. Dana. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've known her for a long time. Okay, so uh, you worked with Jennifer Lopez. In what capacity? I didn't know that. It's in the notes here. I haven't done my all the research to know. Yeah, what no, you it, do was with a, it was it was it was a song. Um, what was the song called? You have a song with Jennifer Lopez? No, I do <laughs> not. No, it was a co write. It was okay. a co write mm-hmm. with a friend of is mine. It, is she singing the song? Yes, it's her. So song. So you're on a song with Jennifer. You're not art performing on, but man, I would be blowing that up. But that would be in my entering the room credit. I've done a lot of stuff with a lot of people, but that was a co-write uh, with a friend of mine, Asia Bryant, who wrote the complete song. Okay. Breezy, so I have just Wiz, altered. I have Wiz Kid, <laughs> Jennifer Lopez, The Game, Dr. Dre. You work with all those people. Yeah. So I j- did work on the record with Game for documentary. But this was before Empire? I mean, this yeah, was before. Yeah, I told you, I just was been around, you know. And, and so you've been Game grinding. My, you've been yeah. in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that was like, none of this was... I'm trying to get a record. You know what I mean? It just, just happened working. to be in the room. Yeah. You know what I mean? It just happened to be in the room when Game was doing a record and whatever. And got on it. Right. Damn, I need to be oh, in I didn't more get, rooms. Well. <laughs> I mean, not on it like yeah, as an yeah, artist, yeah. but in yeah, it. Yeah. Like you were involved with the creation yeah. of a record. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I, I spent a lot of time with him in the studio while he was creating documentary too. 
Yeah. Shout out to the game. His uh, his father passed away. Yeah, it seems like his father passed away. I just today. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I just so, text him and sent him my condolences. I'll do the same. Yeah, Send love to you. Yeah. All right. So Gabby, Gabby Ray Sidibe, um, she was on The Real uh, not too long ago, and she was very open about her sexual prowess. I love her. She's very open about everything. Yeah. yeah. How is it working with her? She was amazing. I think she she's another one who has a very interesting story. Mm-hmm. And, you know, to see people flourish mm-hmm. after, you know, have gone through so much is just amazing. And she was always like... She just real, you know. I respect a genuine person, and you're right. She's mm-hmm. not scared to tell you anything. I'm I'm so envious of her level of self esteem and self confidence. Like it's just it's unbelievable yeah. because the world would probably have her believe something else about right. herself. Right. You know, like the world. And she's the coolest. Yeah. Yeah. She's my she's my she's, my, she's a meet. she's a friend in my head. So yeah, working with her, yeah. we always sat in here makeup and just chopped it up about whatever. Mm-hmm. No. So so, what is your rule? Oh, she cooked me like a vegan meal one time, mm. vegan spaghetti. Mm. She's so like, right she was like, "Come <laughs> over, I'm making spaghetti," and I'm like, "Oh yeah, you know meatballs." I'm like, "Finally, some real food." Yeah. Eh. No, <laughs> it was like zucchini <laughs> uh, pasta. Yeah. She was she was like, yeah. you know, making it. Through. I was like, so well, what have you? What do you like? most about LA and what do you like least about LA? Because it's very different than Philadelphia. Very. Like I'm from I'm from the Bay Area, so I know you coming from Philly, there could be a it's a could be a culture shock. Um I hated the darkness of Philadelphia. Mm. It was just very dark in you know, Philadelphia in a figurative sense. Like in what context? Energy wise or like yeah the energy because you know it's one of them places where you're gonna meet people that have never left. And the Mm -hmm. tri state is small. Yeah. I went to high school in Delaware. Mm -hmm. And which was a little brighter, but you know, that city as well, you got people who never leave Mm -hmm. and nobody wants to do nothing but rap. Mm-hmm. and sell drugs so mm-hmm. it's like where are we going from here yeah i've lived in new york like, literally for- my whole graduating class was going to the same college I'm yeah like, i'm not going there i lived in new york and i've met people in brooklyn who have never left practically their neighborhood right like they've never gone to manhattan yeah it's crazy yeah and yeah. then I, I um once i got out of college i mm-hmm. moved to atlanta so i had been in atlanta for eight years mm-hmm. and um, Atlanta was cool. Mm-hmm. It was definitely brighter. It was it was better as a young black woman, you know, as an entrepreneur trying to get money. Mm-hmm. It was a great place to make money. Mm-hmm. Um, did my thing there as a barber, which is where I made all of my connections. Mm-hmm. And I kind of felt like I hit a plateau and I was like just at a cruising altitude. And I was like, I got to go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and for me and a friend of mine, we decided we was coming to L.A. And I came here and I immediately just loved my peace and my privacy mm-hmm. in the sunlight. Like mm-hmm. I love. You know what I mean? I don't want no curtains in my house. What's mm-hmm. the darkest place? I just moved in a new place. I'm moving out of a place that I had painted gray. I had painted gray because mm-hmm. I wanted gray walls because I just thought it would go well with it on my furniture. And it really did something to my mood. Yeah. Like, I don't even like being there. I just go drop off my shit and get on the plane. Now I'm moving in this new place and everything is bright. Like, yeah. every more windows. Because it makes a difference. It does make a difference. Colors really do make a difference. Mm-hmm. So what is the thing you like least about LA? Um... Hmm. I hate how entitled some of these people are. Mm. The ones that are born and raised here in Hollywood and, you know, the the industry and everything that surrounds us seems to be nothing new to them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So they treat it as if it's theirs. Yeah. It's not yours. I mean, this definitely this place turns out very jaded people. Yeah. You know I, don't, I, mean? I don't like that. And it's really it's been the people that I've met from L.A. who have you know, had some sense of entitlement. Like, yeah. you know, this is my city. No, it's not. Yeah, it's it's super, it's super extra here. Like I've seen like helicopters, you know, cop car, fire engine, just approach a cat in a tree. <laughs> like it's a movie here all, <laughs> all the, the time. damn time. Yeah, no, but and, where I live at is very peaceful. And we will valet. <laughs> yeah. Everywhere. If we live across the street. <laughs> Hell yeah. Everywhere. I will the never intersections for- are big. I will never forget. I ain't gonna lie. I'm, 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 I'm on the valet train. Yeah, I am too. <laughs> I won't lie. I've I was with a friend on Orange Drive, which is by uh by the Manchains Theater. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We drove from there to the Roosevelt. I, I said, can't. "This is this is <laughs> across, the it's a, across the street. It's so across the street." It's across the street. We we literally <laughs> turned around, drove across the street, and went to the back. And, and I look and I go, "We gonna pay twenty dollars for this? We gotta we, gotta we absolutely walk. are." Mm-hmm. So, so the other night we had uh, well, you guys had drinks. I didn't have drinks because I'm I'm trying not to drink. 
I'm you trying. didn't have a so, drink. It's sober January? That's why I left you guys early. No, I'm going to go the whole year. Just I'm not drinking. Good for you. I've already I just, failed. Yeah, I need to just, I need to sober up. But, uh, but we, <laughs> we, we went to a nice little dinner at the nice guy. Uh, do you prefer that type of atmosphere over the turn up club? Or are you I just, do. You, me too. I do. And to be honest, it, it, it has nothing to do with the industry. But I've been, like I said, I've been cutting hair for 15 years. Mm-hmm. Like I hate to stand up anymore. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't want to stand if I can't sit down. But there's quality. There's quality in that environment too, right? There's quality time. Mm, yeah. Like I enjoy. I'm an intimate person too. I like so having I love the, intimacy. I, I used like to, be, to. Yeah, I used to be very different. I used to love being out and being around thousands of people, but now it literally takes a village to get me there. I'm an agoraphobic. And coming coming into uh, you know coming from just my regular lifestyle to this one, it's I've developed a, a very a nice amount of like anxiety so mm-hmm. being yeah. around people it kind of just yeah i get nauseous i'm like mm. yeah <laughs> i I, I, I so feel you jason would always be trying to get me to go out so, and i'd be like no hell no hell no no i'm not going well, why that, do you want to go out was, i'm like yeah. i hate well, that, being around people that my was, comfortability yeah. is everything yeah that was when you lived in new york and i had discovered dominicans oh, i was trying to be every motherfucker yes where. he was You've never seen a dominican oh, i moved to pants. new york and moved right the fuck out because i i felt the lack of productivity i felt Becoming homeless because I wasn't working to pay bills, mm. chasing the wrong thing. Yeah. I had to get up out of there. Came mm-hmm. right back here. I'm glad you know yourself. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> I had. To. So do you? Um, okay, so you're here now. For the people that are listening, that are somewhere cutting hair or styling somebody or working behind the scenes, but maybe think mm, I really want to be an actor or I want to be an artist. I want to find my big break. What would you say to them? Like, how uh, would they? How, like, you know, you're an inspiring story for me. I'm self-made in what I do. You're self-made in what you did. Or do and so and so are you. What would your advice be? I think um, my advice to anyone just trying to reach a a greater height in anything is to just. I think the focus should be on being uh, mentally and spiritually grounded. Mm-hmm. I think that's my advice because I've just coming into it. It's just so much, especially for those who aspire to be in the industry. I think no one absolutely knows. Mm-hmm. You won't know until you get there. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to explain. And nobody gave me a warning. I didn't have a heads up. I didn't have anything. So um, my first, you know, two years was immediately like. It was on level 10. Yes. And it was so draining. And I had never in my life been depressed Mm -hmm. or sad. I was Nobody would have, nobody would ever think that though. No. Like you, your first your first acting job is on one of the biggest television shows, right. you know, currently and maybe even in history and you're working with two of the biggest, you know, actors and yeah. just in general, right. forget about but that's black just actors. Like a small piece of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the going to work part, but yeah. it's everything surrounding it. You yeah. know what I mean? No it's one would just... no one would think that you would suffer from depression. You'd be you'd just be like ecstatic and completely mm-hmm. happy. But I'm not suffering no. anymore. Yeah. It was no, just sir. a time. In. Yeah. <laughs> it was what, just a what was it that created the depression? Was it all the attention? I think it was just the loneliness and not knowing because you gotta understand, once you reach somewhere and maybe you guys have experienced it, just people it's everybody like you got people that telling you, you, you acting funny. I'm not acting funny. I'm just yeah. busy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, it's about money and everybody needs something now. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's like, damn, I'm just really trying to figure out if this contract makes sense or not. You know but what I'm you saying? Know the, you know, it's crazy because on this show, we have Jennifer Lewis coming on and mm-hmm. I'm reading her book now. I'm almost done. I swear I'm going to give it to you. It's but she talks it. about depression. I had revealed before then that I the last year I had fell into a deeper depression mm-hmm. around that because I felt like the demands of this work, of people, I don't like meeting other people's demands right. unless I've set them myself. Right. I don't feel like I should meet you and be whatever you want me to be. I'm going to be who I want to be. And and the loneliness does come out of other people saying you change, but they're the ones changing. Yeah. People mm-hmm. don't realize. Um, I'll tell a quick story that I want to uh, talk a little bit more about that with you. Is I remember uh, after I got on TV, going back home, calling one of my friends that I know for years and say, hey, I'd like to take you to dinner. Mm. And we go to dinner and this person just had a complete attitude and said to me, you ain't the same nigga no more. Right. And I go, what, is- what do you mean? <laughs> and he goes, back in the day when we were 18, 19, I'm 40. Mm. You mean to tell me that the nigga that was selling drugs and getting shot, I'm supposed to still be him. Mm. But Think about it. Remember, we talked about the people in Philly. Those people, or Stockton, or wherever they are, mm-hmm. they're comfortable just staying right there in that dark place. Right. So you didn't grow. I grew, but right. I changed because I decided to grow. Right. Mm-hmm. So how do you deal with the people that that have changed, like you talked about? Do you just cut them off? Do you find yourself 
I honestly, and and I'm, I think I'm such a loving person with the hugest heart. I, I tried to give everyone chance after chance after chance after chance to just go back to normal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But when in the event that you didn't, it was out because this requires so much of my time and yeah. my focus and my energy. And you know, I can't, I can't. I lost relationships, you know, a relationship I was in seven years. Gone. Mm. I can't do it. Mm-hmm. I can't. What do you want me to do? I can't do it all. You know what I'm saying? And and all that you changed, I don't even know what you're talking about. But I right. actually don't have time to talk about it either. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's like I got to I gotta do what I got to do. And I, I really just had to really just, you know, pray for discernment. I needed mm-hmm. to know, you know what I mean, what's happening, what's going on. Mm-hmm. God, anyone who's not supposed to be here, please remove them. Mm. That's it. Mm-hmm. And I swear, I said that prayer every day. I need that. And it started happening. Mm-hmm. Do, 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 do. And I told myself, I'm not going to fight anything that comes in my way. Mm-hmm. You fuck up, my nigga, you out. Mm. That's say exactly some, what I say. Say something crazy. You out. Mm-hmm. Show me you love me. I'm going to love you back. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But this is, the past few years have been the year of reciprocation for me. Mm-hmm. I'm giving you exactly what you gave me. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and for those who, you know, had a negative input on, on you know, any part of my life, I, I'm giving you nothing. Mm-hmm. That's it. I don't have, When's your birthday? July 22nd. Leo. Uh, she's a... She's a cusp. Leo, She's right. a Leo uh, cancer. cancer. Yeah. yeah. But so, you, you consider yourself a Leo? Cancer. Oh. I, that, I don't she even sound, know. She's, she sounds like a cancer to me. I'm yes. a Leo. Sound kind of Leo-ish. No, not at all. <laughs> no, I because I, I, I'll, I'll tell you the, the funny thing is that uh, I said to everybody, uh, and I told you, 2018 mm. has the year to the be savage. the year of the savage. Mm. It has to be the year of being selfish. Not in a, yeah. not in a way been, yeah. where you don't have compassion. Because I feel like you can be selfish and have self-preservation over what has to move you to a different level mm-hmm. and still care about others, right? Mm-hmm. You can still have that. But I feel like, you know, good people with good hearts that come from good places always give way more of themselves to people than they get back. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't have that reciprocal relationship, because I tell you, last week when I was in Hawaii, when I tell you I went on the balcony and I said, Lord, I don't know what else to do. I've Mm -hmm. done everything that you've told me. The thing that was clear to me from him was stop drinking a little bit. Clear yourself up. Get back in the gym. Eat healthy and work on you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Every relationship that you have, invest in what reaps the benefit of that investment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And everything that else doesn't matter, let it go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's I so think much that's been my problem. That, right? Just putting myself on the back burner. That's been my problem for a long time. So mm-hmm. for you know 2018, you know my New Year's resolution was to breezy do everything for yourself that you've been doing for so many people for so long mm-hmm. you know what i mean like i've always been the one that make the plays oh you need mm-hmm. this oh i got you i do this you can't help yourself you can't help others unless you help yourself right. first yeah. so now it's on me they always tell you put the gas ma- put, the ma- put the oxygen <laughs> mask on yourself first <laughs> then and then help, help others <laughs> Is that what they say? Yes. yes. Always put the oxygen mask on yourself first. Because what help. are you going to do? You're putting the shit on and then you fall out and then you're all fucked up. Yeah. Side note. I <laughs> yeah. was on a plane the other day. You don't say. And the lady gets up and says, in the case of emergency and the mask fall down, four masks will fall down. There's six seats. Who the fuck don't get a mask? Right. <laughs> I, I literally thought that. <laughs> what? She, she pulled out the thing and she said, in the case of emergency, two masks will drop down here and two masks will drop down here. But there's six seats. Mm. So who don't get the mask? Now somebody you, don't want a mask. Somebody getting their ass beat if the mask comes down. <laughs> you know, sometimes when I'm on the plane, you know, most of the time I just put my headphones in mm-hmm. and I close my eyes. I'm I'm asleep. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then I have these moments where I'm like, I should really pay attention because today could be the day mm-hmm. that the plane goes down. And I don't know what. I, one time I reached under my seat. I was like, where's the flotation <laughs> device again? Yeah. But just well, we'll note to you, if the plane goes down from 40,000 feet, more likely than not, no, one's, gonna help no you. one's surviving. Yeah. Don't that, say that. Just no, a little comfort for your next flight. I mean, it's true. Like, it's So the true. other day at the NAACP Awards, the one thing you said was it was just black excellence. And you saw the one and only Halle Berry, who is by far my favorite X-Men uh, star. Mm-hmm. I've never been in Halle's presence. Have you met Halle? Mm-hmm. How was it? She's incredible to look at. Like, it's yeah. she's wow. Like, she's, to see. she's taller than you think. You know, yeah, like, is, yeah. The, so you don't expect that her body. Oh, oh my God. It's perfect. It's per- she's perfect. And I don't mean to like, you know, fall all over, but she's fucking perfect. She's shocking in I person. I think Carrie Washington is perfect, too. Really? I've when never she met walked Carrie. by me. Yeah. She's like a little she's like a little fairy that just kind of glides by oh, you. Carrie? Carrie Washington. Yeah. Because she's because yeah. she's tiny. 
But yeah. I'm mad yeah. at Carrie Hilson. So she, the fact that Carrie she, Washington, Carrie Washington, oh scandal. <laughs> well, I'm mad at Carrie Hilson because she. Talk, I'm mad at Look, Carrie Hilson. Sorry, cause Carrie Hilson. What? I'm mad at Carrie Hilson because she talked about Beyonce. So I really am mad at that girl. But I'm mad at Carrie Washington because Scandal is my fa- one of my favorite television shows, and it's mm-hmm. going off the air. Oh, well, they wanted it? to end on a bang. Yeah, well, she better die in that motherfucker, and then she better go out with a blaze of glory. Mm. So, w- did you talk to Hallie? Who, if you did, did you talk to Hallie? Mm, I talked to Carrie Washington. If you could work with one person, what actors, actress, and Queen what Latifah? Actor? Really? Yeah, I would work with Queen Latifah and Denzel Washington. Mm. You should go meet Shaquem. Have you met Shaquem? I have not. We should set her up with Shaquem. Mm. Okay, her partner. All right, so let's talk about the music. So, best of me, yeah, Lil Mo. I haven't seen Lil Mo. I know she's on Love and Hip Hop, mm-hmm. New York. I haven't seen Lil Mo in a long time, but she's performed at two of my parties, and she's probably one of the most amazing vocalists that I don't think gets the credit mm-hmm. that she should. Mm-hmm. Um, how did that uh, the song "Best of Me"? How did that collaboration come together? Um, my producer Jay Nat from Philly, this guy I've been working with, he sent me a record, and my vibe is definitely like early 90s mm-hmm. 2000s you know what i'm saying it's it's that whole era of music is what i'm really inspired by and um i feel like we had the best music in that time mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah, we, we had that summertime top down you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. like we just we had it yeah you mm-hmm. know what i mean and i just try to you know with my music i'm trying to restore that energy like i'm trying to bring that back you know what i mean mm-hmm. and not make it so it's just good and it's mm-hmm. universal you know and but um, you're you're only 30 years old so in the 90s you were only what 10 yeah, but my mom comes from that. Industry. She is like yeah. an old soul. Like, yeah, yeah. I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been so on much it. more mature than your age would dictate. Thank you. Yeah, I, I've been on it. Um, I don't like when you wear glasses because you talk too smart and too. I don't like it. <laughs> I, need, that I, need, I, need the, I need that bitch that smoked a blunt and was talking about sucking a nigga's dick in the car before she came in the studio. I was not Ooh. saying the that. The next show, I need well, that well, bitch. I was not. <laughs> that bitch needs to show up for the next I show. I don't even know who she is. No, that this one right here, the one that just got her tax return back, get that bitch out of here. I don't want her no more. <laughs> Fuck you, bitch. Fuck Mac you, brand bitch. New. I got it. <laughs> Fuck you, man. But, uh, yeah, so I actually, um, I was working on a record, and I'm like, damn, like, I, I get a lot of love from the people that I'm in love with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The little Mo's total, Puffy. Mm-hmm. You know, I get a lot of love from them. Um, So I was like, I said, damn, I need Lil Mo. Like, we need to bring that back. I'm trying to make a, you know, Jay-Z and Maya Fab and, mm-hmm. and, and, and Lil Mova. I need that back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, So... I'm like, damn, how can I get in touch with her? And I seen, I was scrolling through Instagram and uh, SWV was with her. So I text mm. SWV in the group chat. I said, yo, I need to talk a little more. Like, mm. plug me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're like, all right, sis, it's cool, it's cool. So I said, send her my number. And they sent me the number. And I just FaceTimed. Like, yo, what's up with you? Mm-hmm. Like, what's up? I'm like, yo, I need you on the record. I got this song. Da, da, da. She like, all right. I sent it. She sent it back the next day. Damn. Went, to New- went to Philly, New York, shot the video. Done. It nice. literally, literally was no, it was no problem. She but, was like, but what do you mean? How do you reach people? You're on Empire. You can reach I don't, anybody. You gotta understand. I'm not. My mind is not there. Like, please let me get my, one. Let me get one episode of Empire. I'm calling up everybody. Michelle and Barack. Everybody, yes. <laughs> well, no, nah, because then that would be that would be phony on my part. You mm. know what I'm saying? Like, and and another thing, getting into this, I respect people's privacy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like. Mm-hmm. You're still a regular person. Mm-hmm. I'm not pulling on you. I'm not tugging on you. I'm not asking mm-hmm. you unnecessary questions. I'm not calling your phone. I have nothing to talk about. Right. I have a lot of people number my phone. Mm-hmm. I'm not calling you. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What are we talking about? I, I agree with you. I have quite a few numbers in my phone. I'm like, I have nothing to say to this person. Yeah, like, I, I remember being cool on the phone met. with Ryan Leslie at like 7 in the morning. And mm-hmm. I, I I love him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He's like, yeah, call me. I'm like, to talk about what? Well, what? See, I'm the, I don't want to feel stupid. The missing I, computer? I'm the opposite. <laughs> I'm the opposite. I think I've made myself too available, which I'm trying to work on becoming less available and less accessible. But I'm the opposite. I have everybody's number and don't use it. But that's what we're saying. That's what we're saying. That we yeah. have people's numbers and we don't use oh, them. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. In the, in the, in the, I've reached out to, uh, are you, you guys familiar with Kwame? Mm-hmm. Yeah, of right? course. I did a remake of his Only You record. Mm-hmm. And I was okay. like, man, I, I just want to just get the okay. I want to see if he likes it. Mm-hmm. And somebody was like, oh, reach out to him on Instagram. And sure enough, I did. And that's like the only person I reached out to. Mm-hmm. And he hit me back. And what I'm saying is, <laughs> I'm not saying be big headed because you're on the show, but I'm saying because you do have the yeah, visibility. Yeah, my head is the same size. No, what I'm saying is because you do have the visibility, yeah. people will reach back. Yes. Because I'm I'm learning how to use the little visibility that I had. 
when I run into people or when I hear the you know different people want to meet me, whatever, I should, I'm using it now as much as I can to elevate what I'm trying to do. I think I have one number in my phone that I honestly want to call all the time, and it's Missy Elliott. I just don't know what to talk oh. about. <laughs> she follows me on Twitter. I just I've don't know what to talk about. about. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But I love her so much, yeah. and I just want the wisdom. You know what I mean? Call mm-hmm. her and say, I just wanted to tell you I love you. <laughs> That's You never know what that conversation would do for a person. Because if certain people were to call me at certain times and I'm tell me text that. Her when I leave. Oh, and tell her that you want, you love for her to mentor you. Like, seriously. I want to get on a record with you. That too. It's, well, it's, it's too. bigger just, than that. It's bigger than that with me. Yeah, I mean, exactly, it's something it's like, that, you got to understand, like, Teddy Riley, the whole new Jack Swing era, there's something that Teddy knows that nobody knows. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Missy Elliott, Timberland, there's something they know that don't nobody else mm-hmm, know. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I just want the gems, you know? Yeah. I just want to know. And I also, I like to know how to go about it. You know what I mean? Because you know, you- There's something about getting to a certain age and having all this experience. You want, there's nothing better than feeling like somebody wants to learn from it. You know, right. that they are like. Shit, I want a Russell Simmons to mentor me, but. I mean. That's not going to happen. Why not? He's got some legal issues right now. I mean, he's, you can't talk to people. Well, he was accused uh, he's, of raping some girls. Yeah, so, so he's that. he's he's worried. He's he's kind of he's worried busy. about his cases and, and oh, stuff yeah. right now. He's got bigger problems. Yeah. Plus, he just resigned from all his companies. I'm trying to learn how to grow mine. Yeah. Well, shout out to Russell though. Mm-hmm. Definitely a legend. Yeah. So you um. So anyways, speaking of Instagram, recently you posted pictures of your boyfriend. Did you do that? He's not my boyfriend. Okay, well, why do people think that that's your boyfriend? Because we're very, we're very close, but he's my hairstylist. Okay. And we are, he's like a brother, you know what I mean? And he's, like I told you, when I spoke on my comfortability, mm-hmm. like when anytime I do red carpet or anytime I have to be in that glam setting or yeah. whatever, he's always with me because he keeps me comfortable. Okay. It's my guy. Well, what, Everybody thinks How do you deal boyfriend. with- There was a whole article about yeah. me dating a guy. Yeah. yeah. How do you, <laughs> how do you deal with- uh, being a public person now, having been very private before, just being a regular person, how do you deal with the public part of it where, where the public wants to decide who you are, who you're dating or fucking or where you're at or this, that? How do you deal with that? I, I think my job and my only job, only concern is to keep my name in your mouth. Mm. <laughs> say it that how part. you want to say it. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's, That's it. I don't. So it don't. When I tell you since, you know. A kid, I've never been moved by nothing nobody said. I've never, I can't find an insecurity within myself. I can't. I wish I could get up early in the morning and work like regular people like you do. You know what I'm saying? But I can't seem to get up mm-hmm. before 11. You know what I'm saying? But I feel you. It's like those that, type of al- things. That's almost an L.A. culture thing, too. But it's, it's those type of things. But I've never cared what nobody say. People just call me gay. You a dyke. You bald head. You like a boy. I don't care. I beat you the fuck up. I don't care. I like that mentality. But it, it it never mattered. You know what I'm saying? And that the confidence and and it's always there because I, I come from it. You know what I mean? Where would you say that you got it from? Like, you know, the was your mom specific yeah, like really I think it, if you meet my mom and, and yeah. you meet my dad, mm-hmm. they'll light up a room, both of them separately. Mm-hmm. And I think it just comes from them. My grandmother as well. Mm-hmm. You know, she just they just are who they are. A lot of positive reinforcement in your household growing up. Yeah, my grandmother okay. texts me every day. You're so that's beautiful. So nice. Oh, that's so I nice. I love you so much. I, I'm so your eyelashes. You know what I'm saying? Like she'll <laughs> say anything. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like my grandmother says she got her cataracts done and didn't know I was cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I just you know I come from love, man. Mm-hmm. I come from so much love. I don't know what it's like to be left out. Wow. Damn. You that's know what I'm beautiful. saying? So and and that's just it. That's dope. I don't know what to tell you. Speaking of the '90s music movement, a minute ago, a minute ago, uh, finesse with Cardi and and uh, perfect, Ex- perfectly Bruno. executed, mm-hmm. perfectly executed. Yeah, I agree. The when video I, when brought I first back so it, much memories. Yeah. When I first heard it, I was excited. Cardi's on a fucking roll. Yeah. And if you're mad at it, you should just go to sleep. <laughs> for real, man. Like for real, it don't happen like that. No, it doesn't. And it don't happen for you know people of. Of, of that background, of yeah. that ethnicity. It does mm-hmm. not happen like that. Yeah, and being able to stay true to exactly who she is, at the you know, just in the stratosphere of her career and still being the same girl who was making those videos when she was in the strip club. Yeah, she found yeah. something that worked and made it work. It's funny, I posted this on my Instagram. I said, I posted when uh, she had another hit song. I want to see. I posted on my Instagram. I said, when she first came out, she was underestimated. When she hit number one, they said she was overrated, and now that she's killing the game, everybody's on her dick. <laughs> Welcome to Hollywood. <laughs> but yeah. how I go. I was just telling my homeboy that they really won't. They don't accept it until you do it. Mm-hmm. 
right. even then they'll still have fucking problems with it. But it's going to keep. Find excuses for, for why you're successful. So what do you want to leave people with? What else are you working on? Anything inspirational? Where can they find you? Um, Find me. Yeah. Like Instagram. Instagram. Yes. Oh, my Instagram is uh, <laughs> not, not your address. <laughs> Breezy official. B R E Z official. Um, I'm always, well, not always, but I'm on it. I'm very interactive. You know, I like to talk to my fans, and mm-hmm. some people think that's not a good thing, but I just like to talk. I love people. Do you go on live a lot? Uh, sometimes. Mm-hmm. I. But I when got, you talk, do you you mean you you get into the comments and you like yeah. respond and stuff like that? Yeah. Mm. I do. I do, but I, I I rarely get negative comments, so I'm always just talking, you know, thank you or... Lucky you. You know how you're doing. Mm. It is crazy because it's like, I was looking at, I posted a picture yesterday or something, and it probably got like 700-something comments. I didn't see one negative comment, and I went through nice. all of them. You know what I'm saying? So that feels good. So it makes me want to talk, mm. you know. Yeah. I just, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, people are inspired and people are accepting, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. of me and, and who I am. And because that's what I, I just, I kind of just give them myself, you know what I mean? Nothing about me is made up. Right. It is what it is. Well, people really gravitate towards authenticity. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they can, people are savvy enough that they can, right. they can spot some fraudulent shit. I, when I you're did trying to see one comment them. from what looked to be a gay girl, like a, a butch or something, mm-hmm. stud, whatever. Mm-hmm. And she left a comment saying, Oh, so they make you dress this way? Mm. And I was like, ooh. <laughs> no response? I, I, what did I say to her? You remember what I said? I think I said, I, I think I said, stop it, my nigga. I think, <laughs> I think that's what I said. Like, you know what that's I'm saying? That's my favorite response to bullshit. Yeah, because no, it's, it's like, you why can't you? will get into an all-out conversation with a person that you will never meet and that will never have the privilege of doing whatever it is they're criticizing, and you need to stop it. Okay. Because you know, right. I'm not somebody just text put two negative things on my post. I just deleted and blocked them because they're bullshit. Right. And it's a and it's a po- and it's a, an account that has like no followers. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like, you know, as far as like the gay community, you know, the the masculine women, they look at me, especially those who've been following me before, and mm-hmm. they see what they're seeing is my growth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But and they don't like it? It's being translated as Hollywood did this to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, it didn't. Mm-hmm. But if you honestly knew that you catch more bees with honey than you do with up, bitch, you switch your shit up too. <laughs> I've well, always that, liked that saying. And like I said, let's end the show with some inspiration. Yeah. You did? Yeah, exactly. All right, cool. We out. Peace. Yeah. Bye, everybody.